Hello everybody, welcome to the channel, Truck It Prowl. Do you have what it takes to become a truck driver? I'm gonna quickly go through the five top things that I believe that you need to be successful as a HGV driver. So stay tuned, see you in a sec. So the first thing you're going to find out quick is that being a HGV driver requires you to have a lot of patience. And what do I mean by that? <clears throat> you're going to spend a lot of your time, especially if you live in busy areas like me, living here in uh, the southeast near London, you're going to spend a lot of your time sitting in traffic. Now if you don't mind getting home a little bit later than the average Joe, then maybe this job is for you. Now that's not the only thing you're going to need patience for. There's a lot of other things. For example, when you arrive to a place where you're delivering to, you could be waiting quite a while to be unloaded. For example, if you're taking a container to somewhere, you have no idea what's in the back of that container. Now, it could be eight pallets, or it could be 80,000 boxes that have to be individually hand balled off. So be prepared to wait around a lot in that aspect. It's not only waiting around, it's also the fact of being patient with other drivers on the road. Now, this day and age, there's a lot of people on the road that, in my opinion, probably shouldn't be. So you have to have eyes in the back of your head, especially the sort of driving that I do around in London. It's not just drivers, it's pedestrians, motorcyclists, uh, cyclists, all of that you literally have to be on the ball non-stop so the next one I'm going to talk to you about is confidence now I wouldn't say this is probably one of the most important ones but it definitely does play a big factor in the job now when you first get into a HGV it is very daunting very scary and no one's going to be overly confident the first few days however if you're someone that's sort of scared to take on a challenge like a tight reverse um, it can get a little bit difficult because then you've got to try and explain that to your boss why you couldn't do the delivery and yeah it's it's something that does come in time um, there's actually a video I did um, called uh, sometimes you just have to say no so I'll put I'll leave the link in the uh, in the bottom of the video if you want to check that one out. So basically, there are times where you do have to say no because it is impossible. But maybe just line yourself up, give it a try, and if you feel like it's just too much, then that's when you say to the person, "Sorry about this. I don't feel confident enough doing this reverse. It doesn't seem safe to me." Um, they'll probably come up with a solution that they can tip you somewhere else or. Yada yada yada. It's fine. Nobody is perfect at first. It does take a good while for you to get used to reversing. Don't think you're alone when you say, "Oh, I don't know if I'll be able to reverse." Because every single HGV driver, when they were starting out, all had this fear. Unless they were, I don't know, driving trailers on a car before or towing a caravan, then maybe they might be a little bit more confident in that aspect. But it is something that you can build upon. Um, but if you're somebody that is quite, how can I say it, a bit shy and reserved and is scared of a challenge, then maybe, you know, it won't be great. But if you're someone that's up for a challenge, then this is the job for you. Because, don't get me wrong, a lot of the job is quite simple and straightforward, but there will be da days where you will be challenged. So do expect it. So the next topic would be geography. Geography is a very important part of the job. So you, what you don't want to do is get into a job and just stick in the postcode on a sat nav and just head off. 
and a lot of people do do this and it actually surprises me and they probably do get on all right but there will come a point where they do come unstuck unless it gets to a point where they've been doing it for so long and they got lucky and never had any problems but it's good to know the areas where you're driving and uh, it's not always going to be the case if you're going long distance you're obviously not going to know everywhere but it's good to get a good sort of sense of where things are how long things are going to take so you can plan your brakes in accordingly to the route that you're doing and not only that you've got to take in many considerations i don't just mean geography in the actual physical aspect of where things are but you need to know the uh sort of the traffic the geography of the traffic if that makes sense so i.e. you know if you're going into London you're going to be hitting traffic so you need to plan extra time for that route so it's definitely good to understand geography and plan according to it so I found that I had quite a good knowledge of geography of the surrounding areas to where I live so for example I did van work or mobile tire fitting work to be precise where <clears throat> I was predominantly in Essex, Kent, London, and a little bit further afield. So it just gave me a rough idea of what to expect in certain areas, traffic, types of road, and a little bit more understanding of just the roads in general. So you could, you could almost read it a bit better, if that makes sense. For example, if you're going down a country lane, you'll understand the sort of layout of the road and how it's going to progress a bit easier if you know these areas. So if you wanted to become a HGV driver then there's one thing that you definitely need to expect and that is long hours. This is an industry where it's not a nine to five. You will be expected to go that extra mile every now and then and sometimes it's just purely out of your control. Like I said before you cannot predict the traffic so you could be doing eight hours one day or 15 hours the next. So if you're somebody that likes structure and finishing at a certain time and starting at a certain time, then yeah, it's probably not HGV driving. But with that said, if you do like doing long hours and you like to earn that little bit of extra money, then it's perfect for you. Um, one thing I will say is if you have a young family, then that can be quite a challenge. Now when I first started doing HGV driving and I had a young family I found it very hard keep getting back late every night and missing out on a lot of family stuff but as I've progressed into my career I've started to understand that it just is part of the job. Now it's not every night it's not constant um, <clears throat> excuse me but one thing you will find is when you first start your job, you probably will be getting back late for the first couple of weeks because you'll be finding your feet. You will be taking your time. Reversings will take you longer. There's a lot of aspects that will delay you in the day. But as time goes on, trust me, it will get easier. It will get quicker because it's like anything, like riding a bike. After doing it so many times, you just naturally become more confident and better. So the last thing that I'm going to touch on is working well on your own. Now, this is something that took me a quite a long time to get used to. I was always in environments where it's very sociable. I'm quite, quite a confident sort of outgoing person. So I would always look to be sort of the life and soul of the office if you like I was always you know the one that was there talking making jokes and probably what got me into trouble a lot of school and it's actually probably why I actually came over to doing HGV driving because I can get distracted quite easy when I'm surrounded by others so if you're similar to me and you have that sort of attention span then this is probably a good job for you um, it's also very good for people that um, are quite reserved and don't really like interacting with people at all because the good thing about being a HGV driver is that it's totally down to you. You can be a social butterfly if you want or you can be a total recluse. It's literally in your power. You can turn up somewhere, give someone a pay for work, go sit in your cab, don't talk to anyone for the rest of the day. Or you can be a bit like me where you'll turn up, you'll have a chat with the people that are 
here, you'll talk to the other drivers on the phone, and you can build up a good sort of little community between you and the other drivers that you work with. Um, what I have found in this industry is that most drivers are very um, willing to help. So, for example, um, at this company, um, we set up a group, me and a couple of friends, and it was purely just to chat about our day-to-day -day stuff and help each other with certain drop locations. So, we would ask, has anyone been to this location? And someone would reply and give them as much details as they could going to this gate, blah, 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 you need to reverse into there, make sure you don't go into this road because you'll get stuck, so on and so forth. So it definitely helps if you can build up a little community with the other drivers. Um, but like I said, you do need to be the sort of person that works well on their own because if you don't, you can get very down and depressed basically because let's face it, you can be doing a three hour drive straight road straight line listening to the radio no one to talk to it can be a bit monotonous um but that's where you know a lot of other things like podcasts audiobooks uh things like that are good um i tend to listen to a lot of audiobooks and podcasts so that keeps my time occupied and nine times out of ten I'll get a call from most people and just have a little chat and it just makes the day go a little bit quicker and easier. So I hope this video has really helped you guys. Um, if you do like it, don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave us a comment. Tell us uh, the top five things that you believe. If I've missed anything out, it'd be handy to hear. Other than that, have a good day. See you on the next one.